similar deposits around the world or multi-million ounce gold deposits. So we're, we're excited and we wanted to try and vector in on where the best spot to drill would be to hit that target. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcade Economics and quite excited to be joined by Steve Cope of Silver Viper Minerals, who is kind enough to check in and provide some updates on all of their project and how it's moving forward, their La Virginia project, which has the El Ruby deposit. So, Steve, thanks again for joining me, as always. Good to have you on here. How are you today, my friend? Doing well, Chris. Um, yeah, interesting times that we're in, but the company's doing really well. and. It's, you know, we're waiting for this rebound that I'm sure is coming soon in, in silver and gold, but all we can control is what we're doing on the ground and keep the fundamentals of the company very strong. Well, I think that's certainly a good way to approach what we do have control over and enjoyed the presentation you did recently for Red Cloud Securities. Had a couple questions based on that, where you mentioned that with the geophysics survey that you did, you actually have been able to find some mineralization a little bit deeper beneath the surface that wasn't readily apparent on the surface. And I thought if you could dig into that and explain that for folks would be helpful for them to hear. Yeah, so we, we did that geophysics, really looking for what you see in that line 1000 there in the bottom right and that big deep target. You know, we, we've had a model on our main El Ruby deposit, which is sitting up in that magnetic high, just a little circle up above it that you've got the circle around. But one of the things we've seen is, and, and one of the things that we believe this type of deposit will produce is at a deeper contact between two different host rocks is where there should be a massive blowout of high grade mineralization. Um, you know, the similar deposits around the world are multi-million ounce gold deposits. So we're we're excited and we wanted to try and vector in on where the best spot to drill would be to hit that target. So that was the main focus of that geophysics. But further to your question, where you said we found some of these new blind targets that on surface, there wasn't really any structure. Um, I mean, you're, you're looking across it here. And when you're looking to the right of where the El Ruby pit is, you see some of those blue dots and green dots. And those are low grade anomalies from our soil program that we ran on surface um, where you can see as you get further over to El Molino you, and, and at El Ruby, you see these higher grade stuff there. But then when you were looking at the geophysics slides and you see these blind targets under surface, that's sitting under some of those. And those are very compelling geophysical targets coming in, you know, between magnetic lows and, and are very interesting things to test and possibly make new discoveries where, you know, in that area, you're probably sitting a little higher up in the system. And, and the main part that could be another El Ruby or larger is sitting under cover. Um, so again, that, that part of the geophysics has worked very well. It's opened our eyes to a lot of different targets, working all the way over to that Peridonis target, where we, we saw a little bit more grade of surface and structure. But again, seeing, you know, kind of what it's footprint is underground makes it very interesting. And that's a potential for, you know, a parallel trend running the same direction as, you know, the El Ruby trend, which goes down to the historic area of the project, you know, that's already six or seven kilometers long. Um, you've got a parallel trend here, two kilometers to the east that goes from Peridonis down to El Molino and shows the potential for, you know, another whole line of mineralization. El Molino South, you know, isn't on the geophysics sites there, but, you know, it on surface, we're seeing some really nice grades and rock chip samples and the soil lines ran there. And the geophysics really showed us a lot underneath it as well. So we're really big on that target and that trend. Yeah, I know you mentioned, and we talked a little bit about it last time, you've been excited what you've seen at El Molino and also Macho Libre. So it seems like you have a couple other targets that you'll be able to do some future drilling on. Yeah, and I mean, it, and if, you know, for instance, as we test and drill some of those blind targets and they have success with it, you know, we ran this geophysics only over this, you know, what you can see on the screen here, which is a very small portion of the project. But, you know, if it shows that it works for these blind targets there, then we would certainly run the same geophysics program over the entire Macho Libre area and then expanding to the north as we get up to the end of the plateau in Ruby North and off the plateau moving up to La Gloria. 
there's a lot of untested targets that are all sitting in the same regional trend of mineralization that we see that runs for hundreds of kilometers on the project. And it's just trying to vector in where you're going to get these larger blowouts of, you know, ec economic grades of mineralization. Yeah, and one of the things along with that, that I guess may be part of that in the future, you mentioned that part of what you've been able to do that Pan American Silver, who formerly held the claim to this land, is that you've been using the smaller scale eggs that have allowed you to get in there and, and explore a little bit more. Yeah, the, that's the, the man portable jury. That technology over the last 10 years has come a long way. So what that man portable drill rig now is able to do from, you know, power perspective and how deep it can go at you know, really nice size core is is huge. But yeah, when, when mine finders and Pan American were exploring on the project, they were using the large track mounted rigs, which carry the extra cost of having to bulldoze in roads to every target that you're going to. It's much slower exploration, more expensive. Or with this man portable rig, you can disassemble that, move it on to the next target. And within less than 24 hours, you're drilling your next hole um it's got a low environmental footprint so you know with our permitting in mexico we deal with semernat and we're permitted to drill all over the project we've applied for thousands of drill holes um and pads and so it's it leaves a footprint we're able to you know in this modern world where you know we've things we've always done but that have come more to the forefront are important you know esg you know from like you're looking at that picture you see the pad the, the pad there the lumber we reuse all that lumber on the next pad we're not having, you know, so we're not taking a lot. We put a lot of pressure on Globe Explorer to use the most modern technology as far as recycling the water that you're they're using with the drill rig and keeping that going and reusing it. So we're not drawing, you know, we have water year round in the Arroyos, but again, it's just every which way we can to save costs and, and also, you know, be a good steward in the local communities has been, been very important to us as a company. And I think that's certainly in today's environment, an important thing to be doing. Uh, and one last thing I'm hoping you could comment on today. I don't know if we've recently gone over the the maiden resource estimate that you put out last year, but thought that would be a good thing if you could walk us through that for anyone who's not yet seen that. Yeah. So again, this is where the discovery at El Ruby really changed this product or the project. You had mine finders in Pan America and we're focused on when you're looking at this map like all their focus was on predominantly on Convergenia and Las Huates a little bit at El Oriental but the bulk of their success in their drilling was focused at Convergenia and Las Huates and that portion of the project is much steeper it's not it's not meant for open pit mining but when we discovered El Ruby which sits on that plateau that's two kilometers by two kilometers it's flat it comes off the southern end down you know the Arroyo and our deposit can just come off there. It's very favorable for open pit mining. And what that also allowed us to do by having that and showing, you know, that you could already have an economic open pit mine there was to recover ounces from that historic area and be able to put some pits in the steeper area to, you know, that's ore that would report to your leach pads up by El Ruby. And so that resource was really designed, you know, you have some underground, but very small amount of ounces in the historic area. The bulk of that is designed around open pit heap leach mining. Um, showing, and this is what an independent has said would be economic, um, you know, into 2021, and it would certainly be economic today because uh, prices have gone up since then, uh, even even with the recent pullbacks. But you've got a grade here that you know in the inferred at, at El Ruby of 0.9 and the indicated of almost 0.8. The average open pit heap leach mine in this state operates at about 0.5 grams gold average grade and has. Most of them have very little byproduct. I, you know, I worked for one that was Timmins Gold, which has changed name a couple times since then, but they were on the San Francisco mine. Um, and again, it was like another one that operated 0 0.5, 0 0.6 average grade, but it didn't have a large silver component. Um, here, we've got almost another half gram gold, or we have a half gram gold average grade of silver on top of what's already 0 0.8, 0 0.9 gold. And we've shown from our metallurgy that that silver can be recovered, the low grade silver at, you know, 80% or close to. So again, that's going to be an important component that's going to add a lot of additional um, grade and economics to a starter pit here. But like I said, the average mine starts about a half million ounces gold. We're already on equivalent basis here around 700,000 gold equivalent ounces or 49 million silver. So we're off to a really good start. But since that resource, we've expanded it. Um, off the south to the southern end of the Royal on our Ruby by another 300 meters. So again, you're going to fill in, there's another slide in our presentation actually that shows 
that gap to where the pit model was designed. And again, we've drilling since 2021 and filled it in add ounces there. We, with the, like I said, we already went through the geophysics slides, but I think we're going to be able to expand El Ruby at depth, start to develop an underground resource on that, as well as continuing to expand it along strike, both to the north and the south. The, to the north, the geophysics makes it look like El Ruby has shifted to the east, so the drilling we did do to the northern end of El Ruby would have, it would have missed the, the main structure. So again, we're going to be following up on that and testing that moving forward, and we're really excited to what we can see here over the next year and moving into a new resource next year. Well, I know you're excited uh, eventually to get back out there and continue drilling to see what other exploration potential there is out there. And Steve, perhaps uh, you could just let folks know if they have questions, would like to find out more, what is the best way to do that? Yeah, reach out. Um, probably the easiest is info at silverviperminerals.com. Alicia or myself can respond to those emails. The rest of the contact details are on the website. You can feel free to contact um, the office and, and we'll definitely make sure that we're getting back in touch with you very quickly. Uh, you can see the tickers there, both in the US and in Canada on the OTCQB and the TSXV. But yeah, we're, we would love to, to chat and get to meet some new investors and hopefully get some people positioned for when this market turns and you're gonna see share prices go screaming up. Well, I appreciate that, Steve. And obviously a challenging silver environment now, although perhaps sometimes these are the times to get involved when uh, a lot of the market is not seeing that. So. Appreciate you joining me as always. Congratulations on what you've been doing with the project and we will look forward to catching up with you again soon. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It's always a pleasure.